I am now, Bailey. Okay, and since I'm just recording it now, let me just go back to this, uh, this page here and show it because some of you will want to look at this maybe later on. So we've discovered that the cosine of the sum of two angles is not simply equal to the sum of the cosines of the individual angles. So this is not true to say that this is equal to this. For that reason, um, it can be shown with a proof of which I will demonstrate with a video later on, I will post a link in Canvas that the cosine of A plus B is equal to this here. Notice these signs are opposite. If you have a plus sign here, you have a minus sign here. The cosine of A minus B, making use of this identity can be shown to be um, equal to this here. Again, these signs are opposite, minus sign and a plus sign, okay? And um, then we can use those identities to show the sign of A plus B is equal to this. And this is the proof of that. <clears throat> and the sign of angle A minus B is equal to uh, this right here. And this is the proof of that, making use of our previous identities on the first page. All right, that brings up, up, uh, us up to, up to speed. <clears throat> All right, so let's try to develop an identity now for the tangent, the sum and difference of tangents. So what would be the tangent of angle A plus B? Well, we can make use of a ratio identity and say that this is really the sine of angle A plus B, B divided by the cosine of angle A plus B. Do you agree? That's just making use of the fact that the tangent is the ratio of the sine over the cosine of an angle. <clears throat> But ladies and gentlemen, we've already established identities for the sum identities for sine and cosine. So the sine of angle A plus B we've discovered is the sine of A times the, um, the cosine of B plus the cosine of angle A times the sine of angle B. So therefore that replaces the numerator. The denominator, which is the cosine of angle A plus B was established way back on the first page. And we discovered that this is really the cosine of angle A times the cosine of angle B minus the sine of angle A times the sine of angle B. Isn't that true? But here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to divide top and bottom of this fraction by the cosine of A and cosine B. So that means I'm gonna divide each term in the numerator by cosine A, cosine B. This gets divided by cosine A, cosine B. And every term in the denominator gets divided by cosine A, cosine B. Because we're dividing each term in the numerator denominator by the same thing, we still have an equivalent fraction. Oops, this should be a minus sign here. So that's a minus. And then we got sine A, sine B, divided by cosine A, cosine B. Well, how does this simplify? Now, because now we got a huge complex fraction here. So let's see if we can simplify this. Do you agree the cosine Bs reduce out here and we're left with sine A over cosine A? But ladies and gentlemen, what's another name for sine A over cosine A? Anybody? Sine A over cosine A. What's another name for it? Tangent. T tangent of A, right? Plus here, the cosine A's drop out, leaving you with sine B over cosine B, which is another name for tangent of B. Divided by downstairs here, all this reduces out to one. Sine A over cosine A is tangent A times cosine, uh, sine B rather over cosine B is tangent B. And there you go. 
we now have established an identity for the tangent of the sum of two angles. The tangent of the sum of two angles is equal to this right here on the right side. So this is yet another identity that we've established for the tangent function, making use of previously uh, accepted uh, valid identities. Okay, so valid identities keep spawning more identities. I'm gonna notice what's happening here. All right, do we have this accounted for, this, this page here? Okay, so um, let's make that formal now. Uh, what we just proven here, we've just proven that the tangent of some angle A plus B is equal to the sum of the tangents of the individual angles all divided by one minus the product of the tangent of the individual angles. This is a valid identity for all angles A and B. The tangent of A minus B, okay, uh, to derive this one, this is a tangent of A plus a negative B. But we already established the tangent of the sum, sum of two angles. So therefore, using this identity above here, we replace angle A with A, and angle B gets replaced with negative B. So therefore, this can be rewritten as the tangent of A plus the tangent of angle negative B, all divided by one minus the tangent of angle A times the tangent of negative B. But ladies and gentlemen, we discovered in the past that the tangent function is a what? Is an odd function. The tangent of negative X is equal to the negative of the tangent of positive X. Tangent's an odd function. We proved this in the past. Therefore, <clears throat> onward we go to simplify this. We have the tangent of A plus uh, now the tangent of negative B is the uh, opposite of the tangent of B. So this plus sign gets replaced with the minus sign here. Tangent of negative B is negative tangent B and a negative and a negative turn this into a positive here. And so we now have yet our last identity for today. Uh, the tangent of a some angle a minus some angle b is equal to the tangent of a minus the tangent of angle b all divided by one minus one plus rather tangent of angle a times the tangent of angle b this is a valid identity in trigonometry okay easy to remember these signs here as i'm gonna notice the sign in between the angles here on the left is always the sign in between the terms in the numerator, but the sign in the denominator is the opposite. So if this is a plus, this is a plus, but this is a minus. This is a minus, this is a minus, same sign, but this is opposite sign, a plus sign. Easy to remember that, okay? So there you have it. We have all our identities here that are gonna arm ourselves into being able to do problems in section 5.2. Uh, the sum and difference identities for a sine, cosine, and tangent. Any questions about uh, that page there? <clears throat> now it's a matter of applying this lesson to take care of some business in section 5.2. And therefore, I will turn our attention to uh, doing some problems in 5.2. Unless there's any other questions here. Are we good on this here? All right, let's go to our textbook here, uh, section 5.2. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, the proof of cosine of A plus B is laid out right here by using these triangles in the unit circle. I will go through that proof of the video that I will establish later on. So you're welcome to look at the proof in the book and try to reason it out as to what's going on using the distance formula to derive that. And then they come up with this uh, identity we, we just laid out for you. But the proof is all right here on this page here, the proof. 
I'll uh, add my language to it, my voice to it, if that might help you to understand the proof if you're interested in looking at that. All right, let's go down to the problems here. Uh, these problems begin on page of 262. We have a plethora of problems. <clears throat> uh, the first block here is uh, one through nine. They want us to uh, determine the exact values for each of the following. And because of that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are not able to use our calculator. Uh, they don't want any decimal answers. I mean, with any of these, you could just jump on your machine and get a decimal approximation. They don't want that. They want the exact value. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have to tap into some of the identities that we've just exposed ourselves to. For instance, problem number two here, they want us to evaluate exactly the sine of 75 degrees. All right, the sine of 75 degrees. So how are we going to do that? Well, unfortunately, 75 degrees is not one of our nice angles we're used to, like some of our quadranto angles. You know, uh, we, we know what the values are for sine and cosine and all the other trig functions for our quadranto angles. And we also know the values for our 30, our 45, and our 60 degree angles. But notice 75 degrees is not one of these nice angles. And because of that, ladies and gentlemen, we're up a creek or a creek if we want the exact value of this thing, all right, without using a calculator. But the trick is this, all those 75 degrees is not one of these nice angles over here. Can I rewrite 75 degrees as either the sum or difference of two nice angles over here? Anybody? How can I rewrite 75 degrees as a sum or difference of any of these two angles? <coughs> 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to rewrite the sine of 75 degrees as a sine of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. Still equal. You agree? Still the same. Ah, but now we're in business because we know how to deal with these uh, nice angles here. We've seen these ratios in the past. Furthermore, we've just established the identity for the sine of the sum of two angles. We just done that a couple minutes ago. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the sine of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees using our um, uh, identity we established previously, we can expand this out and say this is equal to the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle plus the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle. Because this is equal to this by the sum identity for the sine function. Now we're in business. Now we can just replace all of these uh, trig functions with their um, exact ratios. So the sine of 30 degrees, you know, you can check your unit circle if you want, or you can make your 30, 60, 90 triangle, label the sides accordingly. However you do this, ladies and gentlemen, or you can do this from memory here. The sine of 30 degrees would be equal to what? Uh, one half. Do you agree? The sine of 45 degrees we discovered is one over the square root of two over the or the square root of two over two after rationalizing the denominator. The cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of three over two. The cosine of 45 degrees, like the sine of 45 degrees, is one over the square root of two or the square root of two over two. Now, basically, what I did, I replaced all my trig functions with their exact ratios. Now we just go through and simplify this a little bit. One half times square root of two over two is going to be the square root of two over four. The square root of three over two times the square root of two over two is the square root of six over four. And that's about all you can do with this. You cannot simplify the square root of six. I mean, you could combine this and call it the square root of two plus the square root of six all over four. Um, We'll leave the answer like this. They want your answer left in exact form. This is it. So I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, if you take the sine of 75 degrees, you're going to get a decimal on your calculator. We're going to, you're going to be extremely hard pressed to determine that that decimal is exactly equal to this. For that reason, they want you to make use of this identity to argue what the exact value of the sine of 75 degrees is. It's this right here. <coughs> All right, any questions how we tackled that problem? All right, that was one like number uh, two.
And again, the identity we used for this problem was this one, the sine of a, some angle A plus B, we discovered is equal to the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle, plus the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle. We just used that identity to do this problem number two. All right, let's see what else we got here. That was number two. Uh, let's see, number eight, the cosine of seven pi twelfths radians. They want you to evaluate exactly what that is. The cosine of seven pi twelfth radians. <coughs> well, that's just great because seven pi twelfths just does not look very familiar to us at all. I've never, we never seen seven pi twelfths radians. We don't even know what quadrant that angle is in in standard position. But ladies and gentlemen, we do know our, our, our simple uh, traditional angles. We know, um, you know, some of our quadrantal angles, zero pi halves, pi, three pi halves, two pi, right? We also know, you know, pi sixth, uh, pi fourth radians, and pi third radians. Can anybody tell me? Um, and you know what, it's not obvious, but can anybody indicate... Um, how we could rewrite seven pi twelfths as a sum or difference of any of these angles over here. That's not, that's not an obvious thing here. All right. And look at, because it's not obvious, some of us might be brilliant, be able to see exactly the sum or difference of what angles over here would give us this here. Like I said, it's not obvious though. Because it's not obvious. Here's what I recommend you maybe do. Take the seven pi twelfths and convert it in, into degrees because we can understand degrees a little easier than radians. So we'll multiply this by our conversion factor we established weeks ago, which is to say we multiply this by 180 degrees over pi. Pi's cross cancel out. And what is seven times 180 degrees divided by 12? Anybody? What does that give us for a degree measure for seven pi 12 radians? Well, <clears throat> That gives us 100, yeah, 105 degrees. Now we can understand this a little bit more here. Um, ladies and gentlemen. So 105 degrees is the sum of what two angles that we're used to, our nice angles up here. 105 degrees is a sum or difference of what two angles up here. Can you, can you think of how to rewrite 105 degrees? 45 and 60. Yeah, it's the sum of 45 degrees and 60 degrees. But ladies, I may really want you to work with radians here, not degrees. Okay, no problem, because we know that 45 degrees is really pi fourth radians. We know that 60 degrees is pi third radians. So, you know, if you take pi fourth plus pi thirds, you do get that seven pi twelfths here. You buy that? Common denominator of three and four is 12. So seven pi 12s had better be equal to an equivalent fraction of pi fours multiplying top and bottom of this fraction by three gives us three pi 12s. Multiplying top and bottom of the second fraction by four generates four pi 12s. And you can clearly see then that three pi 12s plus four pi 12s is seven pi 12s. So seven pi 12s is the sum of pi fours and pi third radians. Therefore, this can be rewritten as the cosine of pi fourth radians plus pi third radians. But we have an identity for the cosine of sum of two angles. And what was that identity? Do we remember? See, a lot of it in trigonometry comes down to can you remember? And let's be honest, most of your college career and experience, ladies and gentlemen, hinges on your ability to remember things. So therefore, do you remember that the cosine of sum, sum of two angles, the cosine of angle A plus B, we discovered was equal to the cosine of the first angle uh, times the what? The cosine of the second angle minus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. Remember that was our identity. So we'll use that identity here. Therefore, we can expand this out. This is equal to the cosine of pi fours times the cosine of pi third radians minus the sine of pi fourth radians 
times the sine of pi third radians. Now we just replace the trig functions with their exact ratios. The cosine of pi fours radians, you can look, you know, peek at your unit circle if you don't have this memorized, or knowing that pi force is 45 degrees, the cosine of 45 degrees is square root of two over two. The cosine of pi third radians is the cosine of 60 degrees, pi thirds being 60 degrees. And the cosine of 60 degrees is one half. The sine of pi force, the sine of 45 degrees is square root of two over two. The sine of pi third radians is a sine of 60 degrees, which is a square root of three over two. And there we have it. This looks awfully, awfully familiar. Anyways, we're gonna have the square root of two over four minus the square root of six over four, and that would be your answer exactly. Or you could uh, say square root of two minus square root of six all over four. There, we're done with that problem. So that would be the cosine of seven pi 12 radians exactly. It would be this expression. Okay. So when you're dealing with radians, a weird looking radian measurement for an angle, you might want to convert it to degrees so that you can orient your thinking better, ladies and gentlemen, because we understand degrees. I mean, we it's just easier to determine what quadrant this would be in. This would be a what second quadrant angle, do you agree? It's not easy to determine seven pi twelfths is a second quadrant angle. I mean, that's not obvious, but it is obvious 105 degrees is a second quadrant angle. All right. All right, any questions about that problem there? That was one like number eight. <clears throat> okay, moving on. All right, let's move on down here. Okay, then uh, these problems here, 11 through, what is 11 through 20, they want you to use the sum and difference formulas to prove that each statement is true. In other words, they want you to prove that these are valid identities themselves, ladies and gentlemen, that these are valid identities themselves. <clears throat> All right. Um, I have lined up a couple in here that I would like to demonstrate. If you see any in here that you would like to have me do that I don't choose to do, so uh, let me know and I'll be glad to entertain them. Okay. Uh, maybe we can take a crack at one like number 12 here. They want us to prove that the cosine of some angle x minus two pi radians is equal to the cosine of x. They want us to prove that, that that's true. So we will try to prove this. Okay, so they want us to prove this. Cosine of x minus two pi is equal to cosine x. Well, we can use the difference identity for cosine because we have the cosine of the difference of two angles. So therefore, what was that identity? Do we remember? The cosine of angle A minus B is equal to, is equal to what? Cosine A times the cosine of B. What sign do I put here? If this is a minus sign, what sign do I put here? Plus or minus? Anybody remember? Plus. Yeah, it's always opposite sign. So plus sine A times sine B. Everybody see that there? So basically, ladies and we drop in in place of angle A, we put X. Wherever we see A, we replace it with X. Wherever we see angle B, we replace it with two pi. So therefore, we expand. I'm going to work with the left side. Obviously, I'm working with the left side. So I'll expand it out as the, um, uh, the cosine of X times the cosine of two pi plus the sine of angle X times the sine of two pi. Okay. According to my identity here, this would expand out to this. Well, what's the cosine of our quadrantal angle two pi, which is really zero to uh, coterminal to zero degrees or 360 degrees? Well, what is the cosine of zero degrees? Anybody or two pi radians? Remember the unit circle, that point was labeled as one zero and the X coordinate is equal to the cosine of the angle if it's the unit circle. So this is equal to one. So therefore we have the cosine of X times one. What's the sine of two pi radians? Well, that would be zero. 
And so we got uh, plus the sine of X times uh, zero. This is all gone. And so your answer is cosine X. And we have shown that the left side is indeed what the right side, we're done, okay? So we've used a difference identity for cosine to show that cosine X minus two pi is really X. That one was pretty, sim pretty simple, straightforward. Once you use the identity, of course. Make sense there? All right, let's see what other one we got here. Uh, 12, okay. Let's jump on down to uh, number 20 here. Let's try to prove that the tangent of X minus pi fourth radians is really equal to the tangent of X minus one over the tangent of X plus one. Let's try to prove that. So problem 20, prove that the tangent of X minus pi fourths is indeed equal to the tangent of X minus one over the tangent of X plus one. They want us to prove that. What identity would I bring to the party, ladies and gentlemen, if I work with the left side and try to show the left side is the right side? What identity would I use? Recall the tangent of some angle min A minus some angle B. We've established that identity earlier. We discovered that it's equal to the tangent of angle A minus the tangent of angle B all over one plus the tangent of angle A times the tangent of angle B. We've already established this being, this as being a valid identity. We can use that to expand our left side to ultimately showing our left side is equal to the right side. So therefore we replace angle A with X and we, we replace angle B with pi force. So let's drop everything in where it belongs here. So this is really equal to the tangent of X minus the tangent of pi fourth radians all divided by one minus the tangent of X times the tangent of pi fourth radians. But what's the tangent of pi fourth radians? What's the tangent of 45 degrees? Anybody remember what the tangent of 45 degrees or pi fourth radians is? You know, you could look at your unit circle if you wanted to, to help you out. Or you've used, even used a 45, 45, 90 triangle, correct? To argue with it's the one, point. isn't it? One, just one. So therefore this is replaced with one. So therefore we have the tangent of X minus one. That's the numerator. That's looking good. Look at, got the numerator, correct? Now the denominator. Well, the tangent of pi fours we just argued is one. Right. I got my sign wrong here, ladies. I mean, this should be a plus sign. This should be a plus sign here. See this? Plus sign, plus sign, minus sign, minus sign. All right. So tangent of pi fourth is one. So the denominator is just going to be one plus the tangent of x. Tangent of x times one is tangent of x. And we have shown that the left side is indeed the right side when we're done. Okay. So proving these as being valid identities is not really difficult if you use the correct uh, sum or difference identity of the uh, correct uh, trig function. Pretty straightforward to do those. Do we have this page accounted for? Any other questions, remaining questions on this page? All right, let's get out of those and move on. All right, let's move on here. These problems, uh, 21 through 30, they want you to write each expression as a single trigonometric function. So they want us to kind of go in reverse. Uh, they want us to take a complicated trig expression and rewrite it as a single trig function. Number 22 kind of mimics the right-hand side of what identity, ladies and gentlemen, the sum or difference identity of what trig function? Do you recall? Do you remember, recognize it? Number 22, what trig identity can I use to uh, combine that into one trig function or to simplify that down into one trig function?
cosine, cosine plus sine times sine. You remember what identity that is? Is that the cosine or the summer, summer difference of what um, trig function? Anybody remember? Let's see here. Isn't that the cosine of the difference between two angles? So we got the cosine of three X times the cosine of two X. Anybody remember how this identity goes? The cosine of A minus B? Anybody wanna uh, gurgitate it for us? How does this identity go? We established in the past. Um, cosine of a minus b is equal to cosine of a cosine of b plus sine a sine of b. A sine b, exactly. That's it. Notice these signs are always opposite. All right. Notice this is really, um, you know, what we're dealing with in 22 conforms to this. Uh, so therefore, we can see that angle a appears to be 3x and our angle b appears to be 2x. And therefore, this can be basically simplified and rewritten as the cosine of angle A, which is 3x, minus angle B, which is 2x. So this can be rewritten as the cosine of 3x minus 2x, which simplifies further down to the cosine of x. And there's your answer. So we're done. So cosine of 3x times cosine 2x plus sine 3x times cosine 2x is really equivalent to the cosine of x by this identity. So we're really going from right to left now, okay? Instead of left to right. Instead of expanding now, we're now condensing down, all right? So that's what you do for those problems in there. That'd be the answer for 22. <clears throat> Any questions about that? These other ones work essentially the same way. All of these other ones work the same way just a matter of using the correct identity, okay? To condense these down into a single trig function. All right, let's move on. Um, one like 32, problem 32. It says, let the cosine of some angle A be equal to negative 5 thirteenths with angle A belonging to quadrant two. The sine of some other angle B is equal to the ratio of three fifths where angle B is a first quadrant angle. Knowing all that, they want you to find the sine of A minus B, the cosine of angle A minus B, and the tangent of angle A minus B. They want you to find all of those. So, how to do all those problems? How to do all those? Problem 32, well, um, the first thing I uh, strongly recommend that you uh, do, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is put these angles in standard position in the XY plane, and then build your um, reference right triangle and label the sides. And then you'll be cranking out uh, all that you need, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build two XY planes, separate XY planes here, one for angle A, one for angle B, we know that angle A is in the second quadrant, so I will therefore put the terminal side of angle A in the second quadrant. Drop a perpendicular down to the x-axis and building my right triangle. Okay, I don't know if you can see all that. Um, so what I'm doing is this is my angle A in standard position, angle A being in the second quadrant. And then we'll do this for angle B over here. We'll use this XY plane for angle B. Angle B is in what quadrant? Do you remember what quadrant that was? Uh, angle B is in the first quadrant, okay? So angle B is in the first quadrant. So we will have a terminal side in standard position of angle B in the first quadrant, drop a perpendicular down to the x-axis and build the right triangle. 
All right. That's the first thing you want to do with this problem here, number 32. Now, let's go back to our problem. It says the cosine of angle A is equal to negative 5 thirteenths. Ladies and gentlemen, we remember cosine is what ratio? It's the ratio of the x side over what? Hypotenuse. Or the hypotenuse, uh, which, which is the radius up here, correct? This is your x side. This is your y side here, right? Labeling my sides. So the cosine is negative 5 thirteenths. We know the radius is always positive regardless of the quadrant our angle's in. So this negative sign has to be attached to the 5. So X must be negative five and the radius must be 13. So therefore the radius is 13, X is negative five, makes sense that X is negative because our angle's in the second quadrant. We gotta find side Y. To do that, we use our Pythagorean theorem. So therefore side Y is equal to the positive square root of R squared minus X squared. Y is equal to the square root of uh, 13 squared is 169 minus a negative five squared, which is X squared is 25. This gives you the square root of 144, which is gonna give you 12. So my Y side is positive 12. Note is positive because my angle is in the second quadrant. Y is positive. We've labeled all the sides for angle A's triangle. Now we need to do the same thing for angle B's triangle. Let's go back to our problem. It says that sine of angle B is three fifths. So we know the sine of angle B is the ratio of three fifths for an angle in standard position. That's the ratio of X over R. So therefore this implies, ladies and gentlemen, that X is equal to three and the radius R must be equal to five. We can use this now to find the side Y by using the Pythagorean theorem. So y is equal to the square root of r squared, which is five squared minus x squared. Y is equal to the square root of 25 minus nine, which is uh, what, uh, 16? So y is equal to the square root of 16, which is four. So y is equal to positive four. Now that we have all the sides of the respective triangles of angles A and B labeled, we can take care of business for the rest of the problem. I know this seems like a lot of stuff you got to do, ladies and gentlemen, but now the rest of the problem is going to fall in our lap. Okay, so the hard part of the problem is over, the tedious part. All right, so using this information now, we can now answer the question. They want us to find the sine of angle A minus B. Okay, so what would be the sine of angle A minus B? Do you remember the identity for the sine of A minus B? So you're going to have to go back and tap into the identity. And the identity says this is equal to the sine of angle B, A, angle A rather, times the cosine of angle B minus the cosine of angle A times the sine of angle B. We just drop in the ratios where they belong. The sine of angle A Come back up to this triangle. What's the sine of angle A? The sine of an angle in standard position is always Y over R. So this would be 12 thirteenths. So the sine of angle A re is replaced with the ratio 12 thirteenths. The cosine of angle B, we now have to use this triangle over on the right. The cosine of angle B is the ratio of X over R. So it'd be three fifths. Cosine of B replaced with the ratio three fifths. The cosine of angle A, we got to go back to the triangle on the left. Oh, they told us the cosine of angle A. Sorry, I forgot my argument here. Cosine of angle A was negative 5 thirteenths. Times the sine of angle B. Well, they told us the sine of angle B was 3 fifths. And there you go. Now it's just a matter of you know simplifying this and we'll have our exact answer for the sine of A minus B. Mr. O, real quick, uh, yeah. for the cosine of B, would it, um, oh, wait, never mind, never mind, never mind. Cosine of B. Sine of B. Would sine of B be four-fifths instead of uh, three-fifths? Well, okay, hold on a second. 
son of a gun. Hold on. Let me go back to the problem here. For angle B, the sine of B was three fifths. <clears throat> Not good. This should be three, and this should be five, and this would be what? Four. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. So we had to solve for side X here. There you go. All right, so this would be, yeah, the sign of B would be uh, three fifths, right? Three fifths. I did not label my triangle correctly up here. This is how it should be labeled because they told us the sign of angle B is what? Three fifths, right? So that should be side Y and R, and this would have to be side X now, okay? Let me double check these other things now. <laughs> the cosine of angle B would be what? Four fifths, correct? This guy would be four fifths. So the moral of the story is um, if you mislabel your triangles, obviously your ratios are going to suffer. Okay. So I did not have these sides labeled correctly for angle B. They, they should be labeled this way, though. Please make that correction in your notes. Y should be three, X should be four, R should be five. This one's correct. This triangle is correct. All right, so it's 12 thirteenths times four fifths minus a negative uh, five thirteenths times uh, three fifths. Uh, simplifying further, four times 12 is 48. Five times 13 is 65. Minus and a minus is a plus. Five times three is 15. 13 times five is 65. 48 plus 15 is gonna be 63, so 65, 65th. Uh, Lays on would be your final answer. Exact answer, if you will, no decimal, but it, this would, I'm sorry, this would be your final exact answer for the sine of A minus B, 63, 65th. So that's what the sine of A minus B would be equal to, 63, 65th. All right. Now they want you, we're not done. They want you to find the cosine of A minus B. The cosine of angle A minus B. According to the identity we established earlier, this would be equal to the cosine of angle A times the cosine of angle B plus the sine of angle A times the sine of angle B. So we just drop our ratios in where they belong. The cosine of angle A, using this triangle up here, cosine is X over R. So that'd be negative 5 thirteenths. That drops in here. Times the cosine of angle B, which would be 4 fifths. Cosine of angle B is X over R, 4 fifths. Times uh, plus the sine of angle A. The sine of angle A would be Y over R, which would be 12 thirteenths times the sine of angle B would be three fifths. All right, simplifying, we have negative five thirteens times four fifths. That would be negative 20 60 fifths. 12 thirteens times three, fifth, three fifths would be 36 60 fifths. Negative 20 plus 36 would be 16. So 16 60 fifths would be your exact answer answer for the cosine of angle A minus B. It would be that ratio. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, how would we do the tangent of angle A minus B? The long way is to use the identity for the tangent, the difference uh, of two angles for tangent. The easy way is to realize the tangent of an angle is the ratio of the sine of that angle over the cosine of that same angle, ratio identity. So therefore, the sine of A minus B can be replaced with 63 60 fifths. And that's divided by the cosine of angle A minus B, which we discovered is 16 over 65. To simplify this complex fraction is pretty simple. Both denominators are 65, so we can wipe them away. And our answer is 63 over 16. That's your exact answer for the, cosine, for the tangent of angle A minus B. And we're done. Not really a difficult problem, unless you make a mistake like I did. 
But Les Amon, do you agree? That's not really a difficult problem. It's just a lengthy problem. Is it not a lengthy problem? Because first you have to kind of like build your right triangles and label your sides accordingly. Once you have those built and labeled correctly, then, you know, using your respective ident uh, correct identity, you can then answer the question to determine what, what it is they're asking you to find. Okay, just drop it in the ratios where they belong. All right, classwork. There's only 10 minutes left, ladies and gentlemen. The classwork for today are these problems right here. It's August 3rd. <clears throat> Number one, they want you to find the exact value of the cosine of 15 degrees. No decimals, exact value. Number two, let the sine of angle A be three fifths. The sine where angle A is in the second quadrant. The sine of angle B is to be negative 5 thirteenths, where angle B is to be in the third quadrant. Wait a minute. Hold on a second here. OK. Um, and there, therefore, with all that knowledge, they want you to find the sine of A plus B, the cosine of A plus B, and the tangent of A plus B. All right, see if you can do something with those problems, and we'll wrap things up. <clears throat> 